Absolutely, you have to exhume the body so we can be able to be seen to have set a precedence for following best practice tenets. Okay? Most of the time when these things happen, we tend to take this very localist approach to solving it. And when we are done and through, we put okay, the no. result. Captain Ali, I'm going to ask you, was it right? Can we begin to justify that the army went back to destroy uh, the, the abode of the, of the sect and, dis and kill their members, whether it was one or it was over 300, as widely reported? Was it right? Whether it was right or wrong, whether justified or not, right, wrong, justified are processes. Justice itself is a process. A process. So this, for me, is an opportunity for us to set a precedence. Let me tell you something, Maupe. Whether we get it right or whether the army was right or wrong is not really my concern here. My concern is the process that is going to be followed. Both sides are ego-laden. If you want justice, you will make sacrifices. And justice is just what we call it, justice. Whether justified or justice doesn't really matter. Are we going to follow tested procedures or are we just going to sit down and allow our ego and sentiments and our size of the divide to inform our perception of right and wrong? Mm. Let us look at this process here, the, the, proce <laughs> the process that you, you say you know, is most important here. What exactly is the process here? I mean, if... Yes, the chief of army staff is trying to pass. He cannot pass, and they force their way through, and then they go back. What informs that sort of process? What I'm trying to tell you is simple. What you call that type of process is also applicable to first and foremost, what informs a movement. There is a process for you to even protest. Do we have any rules? of engagement, in quotes, if I could call it that, for process. If you wanted, for example, to have a movement, or you wanted, for example, to launch a protest, do you know that there are processes you follow? Do you know you have to inform the relevant security and safety bodies involved? Do you know that you have to read certain standards or procedures to your followers? Do you know in some cases you even have to identify your followers in a particular way, either with blazards or placards or whatever? They have to be coordinators and facilitators of your protest so that hoodlums, cranks, don't jump on the bus of your protest and do damage and allow you to take the blame. Okay. Well, th 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 this is an interesting one. Just a minute. That Margaret. doesn't answer my question. I mean, in the can sense you that, you know, can you, that doesn't, can you there was a the movement. Whatever it, whatever, for whatever that movement was worth, the Nigerian government did not see them as at that time as an illegal body. And they still haven't come out to say they're seeing them now as a body that shouldn't exist. What we do know is that the Nigerian military went back with some amount of premeditated measure to you know, destroy a lot of these people and their belongings. We agree with that. Can we justify Absolutely. that? I mean, Absolutely. Through any process whatsoever, can we justify it? Absolutely. We agree with that. It happened. Now what I'm saying is, before you come to that final conclusion that it was wrong, technically and legally, there are processes you must first and foremost clear or else you will end up putting something on the table that will be akin to what we already have in the Commission's report. Hmm. But uh, if we're predicating this on the Commission's report, you know, they've looked at all that transpired. Uh, they've listened to the Army, they listened to as many who came forward, and as a matter of fact, they said that they received 3,578 memoranda, 132 letters, and 3,446 emails along with 39 exhibits and 87 witnesses, testimonials before they come up with that 139 page report. And then the report also did say, uh, much as yes, the army uh, used disproportionate use of force contrary to its rules of engagement, and then they went on and declared that the soldiers and officers of the Nigerian army who were involved in the killing of 348 members of the Shia sect should be prosecuted. Commendable. 
but I have concerns with that. What are your concerns? Two parties were involved. One did not show up. What would you have made of this if probably it was the other way around? The Shia reps showed up, but the soldiers did not. What would you have made of it if probably none of the parties showed up? But to the extent that they showed up, took the oath, and I don't know if you remember the part where some of the military officers, when they showed up, they, the way they conducted themselves there, it, it left a lot of questions to be desired because they just didn't want to even answer some of the questions that were being put to them. They were Taken. Their conduct was, people were a little bit surprised at Taken. That. that itself will be part of the report. This is what happened and this is how these people conducted themselves. Taken. But then, what about the man who didn't show up at all? They requested him to show up. In fact, the shared group said saying. that the, the government held him, they didn't release him, they wanted him to appear. In fact, the shared said, look, if he's not going to appear, what's the point of us coming? Because he is the one who is in the eye of the storm. Agreed. Why is uh, Malam uh, Musa, who spoke shortly, uh, a short while ago, why is he the spokesperson of? of the Shia groups. Why wouldn't Zagzaki himself be the spokesperson? Why would I, for example, want you to come and give us probably a statement or evidence in court and your counsel can show up for you? You see, when we, you see, there's this thing about us. It's a collective, or is it a national or a cultural thing? We know what these things are. We actually have the faculties to commonsensically understand what these things say. But we tend to have what you call selective perception. And selective perception is when you only see it when it's in your interest. And you willfully ignore it when it's not in your interest. But it doesn't work like that with all of us. I'm sitting by the sidelines. I'm looking at this drama unfolding. And at the end of the day, two things are going to actually infract justice. Yeah. One is ego. Both parties are ego-laden. Okay, we'll be back and conclude Thank your you. thought. You just heard in a minute. Don't go away.